Hello and welcome. Today we're going to talk about another way to hide API keys. You may be familiar with using NPM, which is Node Package Manager, and .env, and that is one way to do that with a front-end dev project. However, when you use Netlify to host your project, I've discovered another way to do this. And one of the reasons I love teaching is because I learned from my students. And actually one of my students this semester suggested this and it was a great idea. Let's get started. Today we're using the openweathermap.org API for an example. And this is a free API, or at least it has a free tier, but it still makes you use an API key. So this is a good way to show this example. And if you were to save this API key to your GitHub and somebody else used it, probably the worst thing that would happen would be they would cut you off after you exceeded your free usage. And as we see the pricing tier here, I'll click the pricing link. The free API gets up to 60 calls per minute. And I assume after that, they just cut off your usage. Uh, they don't ask for any financial data from a user to get the free API key. So this seems like a good example for that. Let's look at Visual Studio Code. And here you can see I have a git ignore file. Now, if you're not familiar with Git and GitHub, I'm going to show a link here that will take you to my tutorial on the basics of Git and GitHub, and you will need that. And in the git ignore file, I have my API key.js. So let's look at that. And you can see it's grayed out over here in the file tree because it is in my git ignore file. And that git ignore file starts with a dot. So it's dot git ignore. So this ensures these files will not be sent up to GitHub when you push your repository to GitHub. Let's look at this API key, and here you can see mine. Of course, I'll delete this after the video, but at the same time, it's not a big deal because this is the free tier again. Um, so I'm just defining a variable called weather API key. It's a constant, and I export that variable. And then on the data functions uh, .js file that I have, and you can ignore this uh, function underneath it, but you can see I import the weather API key from that API key.js file. Using the bash terminal that you would with your git, and I believe on Linux you could just do this from a terminal, same with Mac, however in Windows you better have git bash installed. Once again, that same video with the introductory for git and GitHub shows how to put bash right inside your VS code window. So this is my bash terminal. Let's look at a way to create this API key.js file when we build the project and launch it on Netlify. Okay, at the bash terminal, what we're going to do is practice the commands that we're going to give to Netlify. So let's just walk through those first. The first one we would tell Netlify is you would start out in the same folder as the index file, but you can see the API key is in the JS folder. So we would tell Netlify to switch to the JS folder. So CD JS, and now you can see we're not just in the weather app folder, we're in the JS folder. So that command would work first. Now to get back out of this folder and go back up, it's CD plus two dots. So let's combine some things now. We'll say CD JS and we'll call echo and we're going to use the dash E uh, flag here. And what that's going to do is tell it to pay attention to some line breaks we're going to put in this string. So now we can say const and put in the weather API key, just like we had in our file equals. Now let's go ahead and look at this file again. And we have quotes, but we're already inside quotes here as we create this string. So instead of double quotes, we need to use a single quote. Now we can paste the key and use another single quote and end that JavaScript definition with a semicolon. Now let's put a couple of line breaks and we'll go uh, reverse slash, not forward slash, but reverse slash in, oh, we need a lowercase in, 
And let's do that again. That is actually two line breaks right there. And now we'll put the second line, export default weather API key and the other semicolon. Now we'll put the double quote again. And now we'll use a greater than symbol and put the file name that we want. And here I'm going to name it test.js as we test this out. And this should create the file and put the contents of the file the way we want them. And you can see we now have a test.js file here and let's look at the contents. They are identical to our API key JS. So the only thing we'll change in this command when we go to Netlify and insert this command in the build process is to change test.js to apikey.js. And then our import in data functions will work because Netlify will create this file for us. So now let's go to Netlify and do that very thing. We're at Netlify now and you can see I'm logged in and I have pulled in my weather app project from GitHub. And I have a video about how to do that with continuous deployment. And I'm going to show that link here. Once you have pulled in your project from GitHub and you have ignored your API key file, we need to tell Netlify to build that API key.js file for you when you launch your app or when you deploy your app, I should say. So let's look at deployment settings. And now that we're in build and deploy, we have build settings right here. And you can see I've got a command in here. So let's edit the settings and look at this. I've got what we started out with, change directory, that CD, and then we move into the JS folder. And then I say and, and then I use echo with the dash E flag. So it will recognize those line breaks I put in. And we define the weather API key. Remember to use single quotes around the key. Two line breaks. And then we have our export default statement. Then the greater than symbol and the file name, API key.js. So now when Netlify deploys our app from GitHub, it adds this build command into the build process. Of course, you would click save after you enter this. I've already got it in there, so I don't need to. And then you want to come up to deploys in your Netlify. Now, once again, you're already in your app. And they've got a button over here that says trigger deploy. So let's do this. And it comes up with a deploy log that starts to build and it'll take a second or two, but as we see what happens, you'll see the command execute during the build that creates our API key.js file. There it is. And then it says Netlify build complete. We can go back. Then we can click our link for our project. Here you see the weather app project I've been putting together. Now I'm going to open up DevTools and on Windows I press Control, Shift, and I at the same time to do that. Or you could right click and choose Inspect. Now we're in DevTools. Go to the Sources. Let me find it here. Well, I've already got it open. The Sources tab in your DevTools. And from Sources, you can go to JS at least if you have your project like mine. And here you can see the files. And now I have an API key.js file. Now will this hide your API key in your project? No, and neither will .env. All it does is it keeps you from storing that API key in GitHub. And then when you have a front end project, it has to pull that key in anyway to make that work. Now there are some ways around that. We could talk about serverless functions, we could talk about an endpoint with Node that would do a relay, and I can make some videos about that in the future. But for now, this is a good way to hide your API key 
and not store it in GitHub, and of course you still need it in your projects, maybe these are projects for a class or just a personal project, and you uh, aren't worried about somebody grabbing the key out of your code. But if you are, you need to look into some other ways to hide that API key on the back end or in a serverless function. This accomplishes the same thing that you would accomplish by using .env in a front end project. Hi, I'm Dave, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Remember to keep striving for daily progress instead of perfection. Subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to be alerted when I post new tutorials. I'll see you next time.